everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am John Brown and I'm gonna be doing today's video in a different location. Welcome to HP42 Studios in a town I can't pronounce in Germany. And uh, he's very kindly offered to let me use his camera setup to do a demo video of the Matthews Effect Architect. Now, this is a boost drive pedal with many different options on it. But before we go into any details about the actual pedal, I wanted to show you guys how it's presented because it is absolutely wonderful. So this is the Matthew FX packaging. It looks like something out of the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. It's like an old school map kind of graphic that looks very, very cool. It looks like you're getting a really expensive pedal. And on the inside, you have in this particular instance, it's a different pedal. This one's the Whaler. You take it out and you have a bunch of different things. You have like the set of instructions like this. Um, you also get some business cards, stuff like that. I'm not gonna show you everything. You should just buy one so that you can see it for yourself. Um, so yeah, we're gonna go through the Architect version three. It's a boost pedal. Kind of in a tube screamer kind of sense. Um, as far as controls go, it's, um, in fact, I'll show you on this pedal just so that you guys can, can see it. In fact, this one's not the right one. Let me just get the right one. Out. Uh, you gave me the wrong pedal, Henny. Okay, so with this pedal, not only do you get six controls, um, you also get a set of switches on the side. And in the instance of our pedal, the Architect, we have three different stages of clipping. We have um, silicon diode and classic germanium. And then with the boost function, we also get silicone or MOSFET, which you'll be able to see right now on the desk camera, right here. So I'm gonna push them both to the top, which is germanium and silicon for the boost. I'm gonna be going into a bunch of different amps for this video. So I have the Tone King, um, Sky King, I think it's called, which is over in the corner behind me. You can see on the camera, the blue thing. There you go, yeah. It's mic'd up with a Lewitt mic. Can't tell you what one. I'll write it in the description. It's also going through the UAD Ox load box, which can also load cabs on it, which is also being recorded into Cubase. I also have a Rev 100P that I'm gonna try the amp into. I've got a JCM 800. I also have a Morgan AC20. Um, I've got a smaller Plexi Marshall as well. And there's probably something else that I'm missing out here. No, that is everything. So, what one? Oh yes, I also have a Friedman. Which model is it? Small box. The Friedman small box as well. <laughs> All right, cool. So the controls on the front of the pedal, if we just go towards the pedal now. In the top left, we have the output knob, which one thing I've noticed is that it needs to be set to complete full to be level with when it's turned off. We also have a mid knob and a bass knob, pretty self-explanatory. We have a boost knob, a treble knob, and a gain knob. And we actually have two switches here. So the first switch is the bypass, which is this one. And we also have activation for the boost. And one thing that I just noticed just before I was about to record this video is that they work independently from each other as well as being stacked. So you can turn the boost switch on by itself just to use just this function of the boost, or you can have this side on which turns on the other five controls. All right, so let's see what it sounds like. I'm gonna start with the Tone King because it's the clean amp. <laughs>
Even with the treble knob on full, it's still quite pleasant. The bass takes it a little bit out of control, and the mid knob, depending on what kind of music you want to play, it doesn't really start scooping the sound until you get right down to the bottom, like so. Let's see what the boost sounds like. Crazy. <laughs> All right then, let's stack them both together. Gets quite into metal territory for basically what is a class A boutique combo, which is the Tone King just to my left. Um, Let's just take that off again so you can hear the clean sound. Tons of gain on tap. Sounds great. Okay, so let's see if we can try it through something a little bit more high gain. So let's go for the Rev 100P. Here's the sound without any of the pedal turned on. And now we're just going to try and... We well, can't really tighten a rev up, but let's see what it sounds like with the boost in front of it. For the Rev, it doesn't really add that much to it. It's already an incredibly tight amp. If anything, it's actually making it sound a little bit looser to me. So, as far as going in front of the Rev, probably not for the metal heads to boost a Rev. But let's see what it sounds like in front of a JCM 800. Um, as I feel like it will do quite a good job with that amp. So, let's turn that off. <laughs> Is that already on? No, it's off now. And you can't really do the trick that you would normally do with a tube screamer where you're just boosting the volume, adding a little bit of tone, and then not having any gain on, because when the output is on full, it's pretty much unity with what was going on before you put the pedal in the loop. So for this one, we're gonna to have to add a little bit of gain into the signal. So let's have a listen. It 
sounds awesome in front of the JCM 800. I'm going to add the boost to it now to see where we can go. <laughs> Boost might make it a little bit too much. So let's turn that off. It adds a lot of bottom end to the signal, which if you were playing something like Doom style metal, then it might work for that sort of chaotic bottom end. But obviously for the gents, it's uh, a little bit too crazy in the bottom end. One thing that we've not done so far actually is play around with different switches on the side here. So we've got the germanium, we've got the silicon, we've got the diode. So I'm just gonna shift this to diode. And now I'm gonna go back to the Tone King. So we've got a clean sound to associate it with. So. Let's switch back to germanium. I'm back to diode, I believe. It's a lot brighter. The bottom end has been reduced. It's a little bit tighter and there's a little bit more gain as well. So now let's switch to the third mode and compare those. <laughs> Wow, all very distinctive in their tones. So, germanium is the low gain one, old school kind of style. The diode, which is probably more along the lines of what I kind of want in a tube screamer pedal, and then also we have silicon. But I'm gonna keep it on diode for now while I try it through a bunch of different amps. Now we've got the boost, we've got the two different ones, we've got MOSFET and silicon. And right now, it is currently on silicon. So let's change that to MOSFET and see what the boost sounds like by itself. So. <laughs> Whoa. So, <laughs> the uh, the silicon one, it's kind of crazy. Um, <laughs> but the MOSFET one is really tight and sounds great, so. Maybe a little bit too much with it dined. So, let's now go back to the JCM 800 which I believe is number four. And I'm gonna try the boost and the pedal together. That sounds pretty great to me. 
Let's see what that sounds like by itself. Again, without the pedal in it, the JCM 800. <laughs> with the pedal and the boost that turned on. It works really, really, really well with the JCM 800. So now let's try it into something a little bit more classic. I'm gonna go into the Morgan AC20 which sounds like this. It takes it into a really nice, compressed, sort of kind of fluffy overdrive distortion kind of sound. Probably not completely suitable for metal, but it is tonally very, very nice. So what we can take from the Architect so far is that it works in a lot of different scenarios, depending on the amp that you're feeding it into. It is very, very versatile. The three main clipping modes of the boost are all very, very different. The two boost functions between silicone and MOSFET are also very, very different. So we've tried it into the Morgan AC20, we've tried it into a Marshall ACM800, we've tried it in the Rev, we tried it into the Sky King, which is a completely class A clean boutique amp. Now I'm gonna try the Friedman small box, which is on, I believe that one. More of a British sound, like the Marshall, but maybe better. <laughs> Let's add a little bit more gain. with the boost. So, it works pretty well in front of the Friedman as well. Not too many, too, uh, to, not too many control changes because we wanted to kind of take the sound that we liked from the Sky King and see if it worked with other amps. But so far, what I can see is that it can be used as a standalone pedal to get your overdrive into a completely clean amp that's really good for pedals. But it also works really well as a boost. Say you want a low gain sound, you only have a one channel, two channel amp, you want a clean and a low gain sound, then this can take you into that heavier territory if you need it to. But it also works really well as a boost. 
So let's try one more amp. I'm going to try the Mini Marshall Plexi, which I think is on that number. And it is just behind me above the green amp on the far left of the amp rack, as you can see right now. Let's see what it sounds like in the Plexi. <laughs> That's the Plexi by itself without the pedal. with the boost on. Takes the Plexi into metal. What a great and versatile pedal this is. This is the fourth Matthews effects pedal that I've tried today. And every single one of them has been absolutely superb. What an absolutely incredibly versatile pedal. It goes from anywhere from really high gain to basically just adding a little bit more boost to your amp. Regardless of what kind of music you play, I can imagine this being a very, very good addition to your pedal board. And it sounds great, no matter what amp you put it into. Maybe not the Rev, but the Rev doesn't really need boosting for metal. It just sounded great by itself. But every other amp, definitely benefited from. So, it's a very cheap pedal. 199 euro. Don't know how much that is in pounds. How much is that in pounds? I don't know. Um, yeah, so, go and check out Matthew's Effects. Distributed by the same people that distribute Friedman, Synergy, all those great brands, Tone King as well from the amp. But anyway, thank you very much to Henning. Thank you for, to HP42 Studios for letting me use their space to do some demos for you guys. If you like what you hear, please subscribe. Please check out riffhard.com and most importantly, check out HP42 on YouTube and go and tell him how much he sucks. <laughs> thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.